Hello, everyone. I'm Justin Gregon. I'm a senior end user computing specialist solutions architect here at AWS. This is the third in a series of videos where I will walk you through a complete step-by-step -step deployment of Citrix DAS on Amazon Workspaces Core. This video will cover the next steps in the process, creating an Active Directory connection and registering it with your Citrix Cloud account. Subsequent videos will cover the remaining two steps. If interested, please see my previous two videos covering the first two steps in the deployment process. In this video, I will start with a quick recap of where we are in the Citrix DAS and Workspaces Core deployment flow. We will then review what an Active Directory connector is and how it is used in your Workspaces Core environment. Last, I will visually walk you through deploying an AD connector and registering it within the Citrix Cloud console. Now to quickly recap, Citrix breaks down the deployment of Citrix DAS on Workspaces Core into five basic steps. In the first video in this series, I covered the prerequisites on how to create a resource location. This included how to deploy two Citrix Cloud connectors in EC2. In the second video, I explained how permissions are established between your Citrix Cloud account and your AWS account. We covered how Citrix assumes a role within your account, where to download a template of those permissions, and reviewed the various sections within that policy. In this video, I cover how Workspaces integrates with your Active Directory environment. Before we walk through how to set up your directory connection, let's quickly review what an AWS AD connector is. This is a multi-AZ managed service that is an offering under AWS Directory Services and acts as a proxy for an existing Active Directory environment. It doesn't store or cache any user credentials, but forwards authentication and lookup requests to your Active Directory, whether on-premise or on AWS. The AD connector enables workspaces in Citrix to look up and deploy workspaces for your users and is also involved in joining machines to your domain. Please see the information link in this video's description for more information on AD Connector and the permissions required. In the context of workspaces, there are two types of AD Connectors. If you're deploying BYOL workspaces running Windows 10 or 11, then a dedicated tenancy AD Connector is used to provision workspaces on dedicated hardware to meet Microsoft's licensing requirements. If you're using our license included server OS based workspaces, then you will provision a shared tenancy AD connector. Please note that AD connector comes in two sizes and at no additional cost if there is an active workspace attached to a small AD connector or 100 active workspaces attached to a large AD connector. Okay, I'll now hop on over to the AWS Directory Services console to show you the flow of deploying an AD connector. Then I'll jump on into the Citrix Cloud Console to walk through registering that connector with the workspaces and Citrix services. All right, so here we are within the AWS Console. Um, and the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to uh, go over to the AWS Directory Services section. Um, and there I'm going to show you the flow of deploying an AD connector. Um, once that's done, I'm going to switch on over to the Citrix Cloud Console to walk you through registering that connector with the workspaces and Citrix services. Um, so we're going to go over here to Directory service, and we're going to browse to that. Um, and then under Active Directory and Directories, um, we're going to go over and click Set Up Directory. Um, and for this, we're going to be doing an AD connector. So again, we're going to be pointing um, AWS at your existing Active Directory um, to create that stateless proxy between your Active Directory um, and AWS and, and the Citrix Cloud. Um, we're going to create this AD connector um, and then for those that are familiar with Workspaces personally, you're not going to be registering that directory with the Workspaces service yourself. Um, we will then instead go to the Citrix Quick Deploy process, which will register the directory with the service. And then their wizard is going to prompt you for settings such as which OU and Active Directory to put the machines into um, and what type of tenancy that that director is. And so after you click to, uh, connected, uh, connect, click AD Connector, we're going to click Next. Um, this is going to have a choice around which size AD Connector um, You'll note that you know, we have both small and large. Um, if you do start with a small AD connector and your workspaces deployment does grow over time, you can raise a support ticket um, to have the size of your AD connector change from small to large in order to handle those large number of workspaces. Um, we like to recommend that for you know, up to 500 or so workspaces, you can do a, a small directory. Um, if you're going to be up to 5,000 users, then you're going to want a large directory. And also keep in mind that these prices here are if there are no workspaces attached, um, for a small directory, uh, as long as you have one workspace attached, there is no charge for that directory. Um, and for large uh, directories, as long as you have 100 workspaces attached, uh, there's no charge for that large directory. 
So we're going to give this a, a description just so that we can uh, note it in our console. And we're going to pick a small size for this demo. Here you're going to pick the VPC that you want the uh, the endpoints or the, the ENI network interfaces of the instances that are your AD connectors to live. Um, I'm going to put them within the same uh, VPC and subnets is, is where Citrix is going to deploy the resources. Um, but that doesn't have to be the case as long as there are you know, sufficient um, rules and routes to allow that traffic to get from a different VPC um, to your active directory, um, then you can put this uh, there as well in you know, a shared infrastructure VPC, for example. Um, so I'm going to pick my Citrix VPC um, and then I'm going to want to put this into private subnets because this is not going to be a publicly facing surface and click next. Then you're gonna fill out all the information about your Active Directory. So, you know, what is the fully qualified donate, do, domain name, DNS name for your directory? Um, what is the NetBIOS version of that um, domain? And you're gonna need two IP addresses. These are IP addresses of uh, existing DNS servers within your environment. So if you're hosting DNS on your domain controllers, you can put in two domain controllers. Um, if you have other DNS servers that are aware of your domain, um, you can put those here as well. Um, and then we're going to give a service account that has the requisite permissions within your Active Directory. Um, so this includes things such as being able to look up users and being able to join machines to specific OUs. Um, you can follow the links uh, in the description of this video to some more information around exactly what permissions are required um, for this service account. So we're going to put in the username and the password. And then we're going to be able to review uh, what's going to be created. And then we're going to click Create Directory. Um, so now you'll see that our directory is in the creating state. Um, this will take five or 10 minutes or so to spin up. Um, so what I'm going to do is going to pause the recording, and then we'll come back when this is available and ready for us to register with the Citrix service. OK, so about five minutes have passed. And you can now see that our directory uh, status has switched to active, which means it's fully deployed. Um, so at this point, we're ready to hop on over into the Citrix DAS console to register this directory with the Workspaces service and with the Citrix Cloud service. Um, so over here in Citrix DAS, we're going to browse to the Workspaces Core section, which you can find under Quick Deploy, Workspaces Core. Um, and then we're going to go down to Directory Connections. Um, you'll see here that I already have two connections um, for, for a different environment, uh, both one uh, as a shared tenancy, so for server OSs, uh, as well as one for dedicated tenancy that can be used for Windows 10 or 11. And again, that's deployed on hardware dedicated to your account in order to meet um, Microsoft's BYOL requirements for, for Windows desktop OSs. Um, so for right now, we're going to click Create Directory Connection. And then next, to get to the page where we're going to pick um, our resource location and account, we only have one of each right now. And then it's going to search for all the directories that are within this account. And you'll notice that most of them are grayed out. So if they're already registered with the Workspaces service, or they've already been registered with Citrix Cloud uh, and the Workspaces service, they're going to be selectable. Um, the one that we just created is in a deregistered state uh, and is ready to be selected. So we'll select that. We're going to pick what tenancy type we want this to be. So again, dedicated is for dedicated hardware for uh, bring your own license, Windows 10 and Windows 11. Um, we're going to pick Share Tenancy, which is for server OS and license included. And then you're going to pick two subnets. Um, these are the two subnets which the workspaces themselves will actually be created in. So all the traffic coming from the VDAs, coming from the users, where you know, where is that going to come out in your account? It's going to come out into these subnets. And then you have to make sure that all the routes and rules and everything that you need to get to is, is in place. So things like getting to Active Directory, internal servers and applications, external websites and SaaS apps, um, you know, all those rules need to be in place. We're going to pick private subnets. Again, we don't want our workspaces to live within uh, public subnets. So we're going to pick private subnet in, in A and B, and then click Next. Um, this is where you're going to put in the OU in which these workspaces are going to get created into. And then a security group. Again, this group will be the security permissions. So, you know, what are these machines allowed to get to? And again, you want to make sure things like Active Directory, any internal and external resources that users need to get to, um, that that traffic is allowed um, to traverse out of um, out of that ENI and to where it needs to go. I already have a group set up for for, for my environment called EUC Private Workspaces. Um, and then the last thing you need to decide is whether you want the service to automatically assign local administrator rights for users as workspaces are created for them. Um, in my case here, I'm not going to give my users uh, admin rights, so I'm going to leave that defaulted to no. 
Um, and then you need to give it a name. Um, so I'm just going to call it this one, our video demo connection. Um, and then click add directory connection. And what's going to happen now is Citrix is going to be registering that directory with the workspaces service, applying those settings. So the security group, the OU, things like that um, on that directory. Um, and then you'll see in just a second that it's going to come up um, as an available connection, an active state within the Citrix Cloud Console, as you can see here. And so now, now this location is now ready for you to deploy workspaces to. Um, so in our next video, we're going to cover how to actually create the images. Um, and then in the final video, we'll cover how to actually deploy uh, a pool of workspaces to your users. All right, so that concludes today's uh, visual walkthrough of, of deploying and, and registering an AD connector uh, between your AWS account and your Citrix Cloud account. Um, you'll see on the screen here some resources as well as some links in the description of this video that cover uh, additional reading around Amazon Workspaces Core, uh, the permissions that are required, um, and, and just more information around the, the Citrix on Core solution. Um, you'll also see some links to uh, our articles on uh, community at AWS, specifically around end user computing. Um, and there are additional videos within our end user computing YouTube playlist um, that may be of interest to you. Uh, again, this is video three, and it and will be a five part series covering a uh, complete visual walkthrough of deploying Citrix on Amazon Workspaces Core. Um, I want to thank you for your time today, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video um, where we'll walk through creating your first image for use within the Amazon Workspaces Core solution. Thank you.